Welcome to this tutorial for the Cirrus Vision Jet for MSFS. This tutorial is from a runway start with engines on and we've planned our flight in the world map. A tutorial for how to plan flights in the world map can be found in the description below. Ok, let's go fly. A few jobs before we really begin, we'll set altimeter to local pressure and we'll switch on the probe heat and the anti-ice because temperatures are pretty low today. On PFD options, we'll click into speed bugs and we'll switch on the PFD speed bugs for our takeoff and approach speeds. On the radios panel to the right, we'll click into audio and radios and on nav1 radio, enter the frequency of our destination ILS and hit transfer to make that the primary frequency. We'll now get through some of the initialization stuff, so you go into database and just hit back, it will tick that off. Into Fire. system tests. Fire. Click the pre-flight test and it will run through the fire test and the stall warning test. Once that's complete, hit back, go into the fuel page, hit fuel on board sync. That will sync the fuel from a simulator into the plane. And finally into weight and balance, just click into it, then click back and that will load in the current aircraft weights. And now we'll click into flight plan. On the flight plan page, you'll see the plan that we made in the world map. All we'll do at the moment is set a final descent height of 3000 feet at the intercept point at our destination airport. We can also click into the VNAV page, hit VNAV enabled, and now go back to the initialization page and you'll see that flight plan is ticked. We'll press accept initialization and we'll return to the flight plan page just for reference during flight. Using the altitude selector dial on the console, we'll dial in our desired cruising altitude, we'll say 20,000 feet for this short flight today. We'll now click vertical speed and we'll select our desired vertical climb speed, we'll set that to 2,000 feet per minute. You can see flight directors already on, we'll also activate nav mode so the airplane will follow our flight plan. The Cirrus jet has an auto throttle. So using the control on the pedestal, we'll set our initial speed to 250 knots. After we take off, I'll activate this with a hardware hotkey, but the button for activating it is located on the pedestal next to the throttle. We're now in a good configuration for flight. We've got target speed, nav mode, vertical speed mode, climb rate, and target altitude. Takeoff is very simple, parking brake off and full throttle. As we take off, once we have positive rate, I bring the landing gear up, can roll off the flaps and I'll also activate autopilot and auto throttle using hardware hotkeys. But the autopilot master and auto throttle master are located on the centre console and the pedestal. Make sure you've activated oxygen and fresh air which are the engine bleed modes for our flight. As you climb above transition altitude in your country, hit barometer set standard to set standard pressure. Remember to reverse this on the way down. During climb you'll notice a reduction in indicated airspeed consistent with altitude and the plane may also decelerate slightly while it climbs but this shouldn't be a problem by the time you reach your cruise altitude. If you find the plane is getting too slow just reduce your vertical speed. Once we reach our target altitude of 20,000 feet, the airplane will level off into a cruise. During cruise, it will always manage speed so that it stays below the barber pole. In preparation for descent, we will set our selected altitude to our bottom of descent altitude of 3,000 feet. A very straightforward way to set up VNAV while you're at cruise is to click into your next waypoint in the flight plan, enter your cruising altitude. The airplane will now plan altitudes between your current point and your bottom of descent and there'll be a top of descent along the way. And after top of descent the airplane will now give you a target descent rate. Once that's set, if you then click into the VNAV menu, you just want to make sure you've got a flight path angle set of negative 3 degrees. As you get closer to top of descent, you'll see a countdown to top of descent on the VNAV screen. You'll notice during this phase of flight, the speed reference mode is set to FMS. That's correct for now, and I'll show you when to change it later on. 
While we're at cruise, we'll take the opportunity to set some minimums if you wish for your approach. We're going to set 150 foot radio minimums here. If you look on the navigation display, you'll see your top of descent label just ahead. At top of descent, activate vertical speed mode and adjust your vertical speed to match the vertical speed target given on the VNAV profile screen. For example, our target here is around 1600 feet per minute, so that's what we've set. During descent, monitor the vertical deviation and adjust vertical speed accordingly if needed. The airplane should do the rest, keeping you in a stable descent. As you get near 10,000 feet, or if the airplane gets a little bit fast during descent, set the auto throttle to manual and dial in 250 knots. As we get near bottom of descent, we'll want to dial in our approach speed. So as we saw on the speed bug screen at the start of the flight, our VREF is 90 knots, so we'll dial that in. And as the airplane starts to decelerate, deploy flaps and landing gear for approach. Just before you turn on to final, set your nav source to radio and activate approach mode. The airplane should now pick up the localizer and glide slope. The airplane will follow the localizer and glide slope of the ILS all the way down to minimums at your destination airport. During final, we keep the autopilot engaged all the way down to minimums. I then disengage both autopilot and auto throttle and flare. Make a manual landing and that concludes our flight in the Cirrus jet for MSFS. As we break to a stop I'll say thank you for watching, I hope you found this useful, if you did please drop a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Take care and I'll see you next time.